Good morning, friends. Greetings and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, and regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, the longevity products, or true skin health products, please call. Give us a call at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have a success story you'd like to share, testimonial, or if you uh, just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010. Love hearing from my smart listeners. If you're listening to this program, you are on the uh, in the top top tier of intelligent folks on the planet, and that's a good thing. Stuff we talk about on this program is not stuff you're going to hear about anywhere else. I didn't just read it on the internet. This is based on my personal experience, my research, my uh, clinical experience, working directly with patients, formulations experience, academic research as well. And we don't dumb it down on this program because we, we should really understand how our bodies work. It's not really that complicated at the end of the day. It's all basically just plumbing and electricity take care of the plumbing system, the blood, and everything else will fall into place. That's really the the message that I want everybody to understand. That's what I want people to understand when I pass on. My legacy should be spreading the word about how simple and how easy health should be. It's not complicated. We overthink, and we're trained to overthink. There's even a titillating quality to our overthinking. We enjoy it, but it doesn't help. We don't need to think to get, we don't need to overthink to get better because it's in the body's nature to heal. It's really very, very simple. You put the good stuff in, you keep the bad stuff out. It's about as simple as that. When the bad stuff gets in, it gets into the blood, it deprives the body of nutrients on top of nutritional deficiencies that are just there from the way we eat. Toxicity accumulates and you get sick. It's not complicated. If, uh, when they're making computer chips, at Intel, they have to use clean rooms because if a little drop of dust, a little piece of dust gets on a computer chip, obviously it's going to be destroyed. Probably millions of computer chips will be destroyed from a little drop of dust, a little piece of dust. So they have to uh, wear uh, all. They have to do. And cl- they have to make, make the chips in clean rooms. They got to wear the gowns. They got to do everything to keep our, everything dust free and sterile. Well, imagine how much more complex the body is. Fortunately, the body has a detoxification system built into it, but that system can be overlooked loaded. And that's pretty much what happens when we get sick. And I get, it drives me nuts to see these prescription drugs for diabetes and prescription drugs for, uh, for obesity and prescription drugs for every, every single health ailment we have when we don't need prescription drugs to get better. In fact, there's no prescription drugs that can make us better, but lifestyle choices can. We got into this pickle through bad lifestyle choices, this pickle of poor health, and we can get out of it with better lifestyle choices. It's really as simple as that. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. We got lines open for you. We were going to talk to Sanjeev Javi about the new CBD products from Longevity. We, we will uh, we postpone that till next week. So uh, we'll get your calls in the bottom of the hour. Our number eight six uh, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. So we're talking about the digestive system. Seems like we're always talking about the digestive system. Yeah, uh, last program, we talked about bitters, bitter herbs, dandelion greens, bitter plants, bitter vegetables, Swedish bitter solution. 
bitters are really interesting. Bitters upregulate the digestive system. They prepare the digestive system to digest. They prepare the digestive system to do its work. That's why you want to start your meals off with bitters, whether you're starting it off with dandelion greens and a salad or horseradish, or you want to go get yourself some Swedish bitters. Swedish bitters are available on the internet, and they're made with a, a whole series of herbs that all have a bitter quality that stimulate the digestive juices. Eating bitters, basically we're talking eating bitter herbs, is a strategy that's been used throughout for centuries, for thousands of years probably. Indigenous cultures use bitters at the beginning of their meal to support digestive health. Nobody still, We still don't know the exact mechanism of the health supporting effect of bitter substances. But it probably has something to do with the whole idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Herbal substances are alkaloids, or at least the, I should say, let me rephrase that. The bitter substances in herbal substances, in herbal uh, materials, are called alkaloids. You may have heard that term. Alkaloids are nothing more than, uh, than molecules with a little piece of nitrogen on them. And the more nitrogen they have, the more bitter they are. Bitter is actually an electrical phenomenon on the tongue. It stimulates, it stimulates bitter receptors. It's a fundamental taste on the tongue. And nitrogen is extremely bitter. Nitrogen-containing compounds are extremely bitter. These nit nitrogen-containing compounds are technically called alkaloids. Chocolate is a classic example. You ever have baker's chocolate? That's a classic example of a bitter substance. You know what? If you did a little baker's chocolate... At the beginning of your meal, and by little, I'm talking a pinch on your tongue, all it takes is a little pinch of bitter substances on the tongue because it's really an electrical phenomenon. So you're basically turning on an electrical circuit when you do something bitter. You put a little bit on your tongue, and, and the whole digestive machinery kicks in. It's like an on switch for the digestive system. So you put a little bitter on your tongue. You could do it with caffeine. You could do it with uh, cocoa. You could do it with, uh, with herbs. You could do it with food. Throughout history, bitters have been appreciated not just for digestive health, but for general health-promoting benefits, general uh, body health-promoting benefits. It's been found on uh, bitter substances have been found on pottery jars and in tombs in ancient Egypt. The Romans used to put bitters in the in, in their wine, so uh, people. The idea being, you wouldn't get a hangover and you wouldn't overeat. Bitters have a, an appetite suppressant effect, as I said. How interesting is that, by the way? The app, you get the same, you get a stimulation of digestive juices and an appetite suppressant effect with the same strategy. There's a really interesting reason why that's so, and uh, we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, so bitters have been used throughout history. They used to use a, a bitter, uh, a bitter ales, bitter wines in, in medieval England. Even today, uh, you can get bitters, uh, bitter ale, Schweppes bitter ale, I think it's called, various bitter ales. Uh, bitters were promoted as a stomach remedy in the uh, in the 17th, in the 18th and 19th century. They were added to uh, spirits who, that were uh, during the um, uh, prohibition. They were added to spirits, things like uh, uh, grain alcohol and vodka that they would distill and would taste really crappy because they had they were just distilling them in their bathtubs basically during the prohibition. So they would uh, put bitters in the in the spirits to kind of make them. Uh, make the the crappy alcohol taste a little bit better. I, I mean, all alcohol doesn't. No alcohol really tastes good. But back in the prohibition, they were really. I, I imagine it must have been really terrible. So they put, would put bitters in the alcohol. Bitters were in Coca Cola. Uh, bitters. We've recognized the health benefits of bitters for a long time, even to this to the point today. Where, as I say, you can get Swedish bitters and stomach bitters on the internet. The most common uh, bitters that you'll find in um, in stomach bitter, in stomach bitter formulations, are gentian and wormwood, which are also, as it turns out, to be drug. Uh, turns out they're drugs. Artemisia is the technical name for wormwood, and and gentian. Both of these are antimicrobial and antibacterial. But uh, throughout history and even to this day, they are used to treat stomach pain, nerve pain, muscle weakness, uh, inflammation, liver issues eye conjunctivitis, and of course for digestion, gentian and artemisia, among other bitters, uh, have digestive juice stimulating properties. You can get gentian, by the way, on the internet. That's a, that's a, a great, if you're dealing with irritable bowel syndrome or, or a SIBO, we'll talk about that here, um, if not today, tomorrow, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Really, if you're dealing with any digestive health issue, go get yourself some gentian. It's, a, it's a, it really a, a very easy to get on the internet, and you just do a couple drops, maybe two or three drops in some water before meals, and it stimulates digestive juices. And that's G-E-N-T-I-A-N, by the way, gentian. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we 
We are back on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase longevity products, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And don't forget you can click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. If you would like to sign up to join the Bright Side Ben team for a one-time $25 fee, you can be in business for yourself and help change the world at the same time. Be in business for yourself and help change the world at the most basic and fundamental level there is, which is the level of our individual good health. The individual's good health is the fundamental component in the health of a culture, in the health of a society, in the health of the planet. So when we help an individual with their health, we're changing the world at the most basic fundamental place there is. And that's powerful stuff. Plus, you can make some money, too. Call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470, or click on the Join the Team link at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Okay, so uh, stomach bitters, gentian, angelica, myrrh, snake root, valerian, these are all herbs that you'll find in various uh, stomach bitter or Swedish bitter formulations. You can just get straight gentian, uh, gentian drops, G-E-N-T-I-A-N, gentian. Gentian is a root. Uh, it's actually um, a, a family of various plant plants, all of which have uh, interesting alkaloid properties. The roots do. So gentian root extract is available uh, really readily, 10 bucks for an ounce uh, in that order of uh, magnitude, and an ounce will last you a month if you use a few drops before meals. It's pretty cheap stuff for, uh, for the kind of benefits that you can get from it. Definitely, if you have uh, any health challenge that, uh, in terms of digestive health, which, of course, all health challenges have an element of digestive health, it's things like SIBO or heartburn. Um, if you have a sense of fullness or nausea after you eat meals or uh, slow, slow emptying, slow gastric emptying from the stomach into the intestine, pretty much any digestive health issue, pretty much any issue, do a couple drops of, veg of gentian. It's cheap enough, and it's not going to hurt you. All three digestive health, uh, digestive processes, or all three phases of the digestive uh, process, are activated or stimulated by bitters. The head phase, so you get salivary secretion. Remember, there's three phases of digestion. You got your head phase, the part that starts off in the head. They call it the cephalic phase. Then you have the stomach phase, also known as the gastric phase, and then you have your intestinal phase. And all three of these uh, these phases are activated by bitters, and all three of these phases are required, activation of all three of these phase, phases are required for good digestion, especially that cephalic phase, the head phase. We underestimate the importance of the cephalic phase of, um, uh, of digestion. We digest starting in our mouth, and actually, as I've said before, we start the digestive process in our brain. Paying attention to our food also activates digestive juices. So the brain and the mouth are two very underappreciated areas of the digestive process that we can leverage if we're not as healthy as we want to be. Just think about it. If you chronically put food that's undigested at the mouth and head level into the stomach, eventually it's going to put a load on the stomach. It's going to put a load on the intestine. It's going to put a load on all the digestive machinery because it's expecting the lower digestive machinery is expecting the food to come in pre-processed. It doesn't have as much, it, it, ha, it can do it, but it's a burden on the digestive system that may not be a problem at first, but over the course of, over the course of time, and by time I'm talking about years and decades, by the time we're in our 40s or 50s or even earlier, this burden, this chronic burden on the digestive system is not going to be in our health interest, especially if we're already sick. So, just something as simple as chewing your food. The enzymes in your mouth are very similar to the enzymes in your pancreas. You've got a pancreas in your mouth, or at least a satellite of the pancreas in your mouth. Amylase, lipase, protease even. These are enzymes that break up fats, enzymes that break up starches, and enzymes that break up proteins. If you're a diabetic, chewing your food can reduce the load on your pancreas. If you're anybody chewing your food can reduce your load on your pancreas. I don't want to, you know, keep, just keep going over this, but it's just so amazing how much power we have over our bodies that we're not leveraging. We're leaving power on the table 
And instead of our doctors telling us about this, teaching us about this, doctor means teacher, the word doctor means teacher, instead of our doctors teaching us about our power, teaching us about our amylase and lipase and protease, it's in our mouths, teaching us about stimulating digestive juices by thinking about your food, they're drugging us. And they're drugging us to hide the symptoms. They're not even drugging us to take care of the problem. They're drugging us just to hide the symptoms. And acids, by the way, are horrible, horrible, horrible drugs if you understand the digestive process and its relationship to good health. So all three phases of the digestive process are going to be stimulated by bitters, not just the head phase, but also the stomach phase. As you're chewing your food and grinding your food, distension of the stomach alone triggers acid. This distension, this acid secreting effect can also be duplicated by bitters. And you're getting, uh, you also have an intestinal phase. You've got to have intestinal juices that are secreted, intestinal enzymes that are secreted. And all, these, uh, all of these processes or all of these systems can be turned on by using bitters before your meal for a $10 an ounce. How incredible is that? You get a month's supply for 10 to 20 bucks of a stomach bitter that will help every level of the digestive process work better. Aloe vera, by the way, has a digesti digestive uh, supporting property, and largely that's because it has bitters. Aloe is a very bitter substance. Aloe uh, also has, of course, healing substances, so it not only stimulates digestive juices, but also coats and soothes the digestive system. That's always a good thing. And then also um, apple cider vinegar has a certain bitter quality, and that also can stimulate digestive juices, and it also is a faux digestive juice, a, a pseudo digestive juice, the acetic acid is. So anything that turns on the digestive juices or anything that mimics the digestive juices, including uh, aloe vera and also, well, by the way, HCL drops that you can get a pharmacist to make, anything that duplicates betaine HCL, which you'll get in your ultimate enzymes, anything that duplicates or supports these digestive juices or stimulates these digestive juices will help you with your Alzheimer's, dementia, will help you with your arthritis, will help you with your psoriasis, will help you with your pulmonary fibrosis. Because you're working, when you work this way, you're working at the base of the pyramid, not the tip of the pyramid. The tip of the pyramid is where your doctors work. The base of the pyramid is where you can work on your own and then everything uh, that's on top of that base will improve. Something as simple as apple cider vinegar and HCL drops and aloe vera and gentian violet. Uh, gentian. There's a drug, by the way, called gentian violet. Something that's com completely different. Uh, that, that's actually uh, a stain, a dye that has antimicrobial properties. Did you know that the pharmaceutical business began as the dye business? That's a whole other story. Most people don't realize that the, uh, the pharmaceutical factories, before they were, were tooled up to make drugs, were making dyes. And so a lot of drugs are actually, uh, a lot of the really, really old drugs were actually dyes at first. Gentian violet is one of those. Purple dye uh, and also antimicrobial. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Our number, 844-236-6010. That's 844-236-6010. If you've got questions about the digestive system or anything we're talking about here today, bitters, or if you have a comment or success story, or if you want to uh, have anything to say about our Truth Skin Health products or questions about our Truth Skin Health products, 844-236-6010. 6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Back on the bright side, 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. You have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, our uh, longevity products, longevity formulations, our true skin health products, which are all available, by the way, at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. You can purchase longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. And you can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team by calling 866-735-2470 or heading to our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com and clicking on the Join the Team link. 
Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number, and we'll get your calls here momentarily. Tomorrow we're going to talk to Dr. Jamie Kaufman about her book, Acid Reflux in Children. Dr. Kaufman was on our program maybe a couple of years ago about her other book on acid reflux, which had a really interesting name, which I've forgotten at this point, but Jamie Kaufman's name is spelled K-O-U-F-M-A-N if you're interested in checking out her books. We're going to talk about acid reflux in children, which as a pharmacist is really one of my one of my real pet peeves about pharmacy, more than pet peeve, it just really f- makes me angry, treating children with drugs for acid reflux. And by children, I'm not just talking children, kids, as, which is bad enough to give a kid a drug for heartburn. I'm talking babies. I'm talking newborns. Yes, doctors give newborn babies Zantac because they have acid reflux because uh, of something the mom is eating or something the mom is, is a problem that the mom has or a baby who's not who's been weaned is uh, eating cereal so they have heartburn and uh, they get drugged this is terrible absolutely horrific to give a child a drug of any kind except for emergencies by emergency i'm talking about bacterial infection maybe intractable pain i suppose but other than that Children should never be on a chronic drug. Anyway, we're going to talk to Dr. Jamie Coffin about her book, Acid Reflux in Children. We'll get your calls here momentarily. Speaking of uh, acid reflux, this is from Women's Health Magazine. Seven ovarian cancer signs that are incredibly easy to miss. One of them is, find it here, heartburn. If ovarian cancer is pushing things up against the stomach you can get uh, acid reflux into the esophagus. Ovarian cancer pushes things up. The growth, anyway, can push things up. Pain during sex is another uh, easy to miss uh, ovarian cancer, potential uh, ovarian cancer issue. Regular periods, going to the bathroom a lot, same idea of pressure. You're always constipated. Again, impaired bowel function can be a sign of ovarian cancer. Feeling nauseous can be a sign and uh, also, of course, the most obvious sign is pers- persistent abdominal or pelvic pain. That's from Women's Health Magazine. From uh, Psych Central Magazine, researchers at Wake Forest School of Medicine in North Carolina have found that naturally mindful people feel less pain. It's kind of interesting. Mindfulness is, you would think if you were mindful about your body, you'd be more, you feel more pain, and actually that's not what happens. You have a part of your brain that there, uh, more and more you're going to start to hear about uh, it's uh, neuroscientists are really talking about this part of the brain a lot these days, and it's only well, it usually takes five or ten years before these kinds of things get out into the public zeitgeist, as they say, the 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 uh, spirit of the world. The zeitgeist is the spirit of the world, and periodically these ideas, memes, if you will, belief systems, ideas, and notions get into the uh, into the cultural the cultural mindset, the collective mindset. And one of these uh, one of these ideas is going to be something called the default mode network, the DMN. The default mode network is the part of the brain that kicks in in default when you're not paying attention and it functions like a voice in your head, like a narrator in your head. And this voice in your head is responsible for a lot of misery. This voice in our head is responsible for a lot of depression. This voice in our head is responsible for suicide. People will kill themselves because of the voice in their head tells them to do it. This voice in our head is part of something that's hardwired into the brain called the default mode network. And this is something we've only realized over the last 10 or 15 years. Meditators have known this about the default mode network, even though they didn't call it the default mode network. Because when you're meditating or when you're mindful or when you're paying attention, the default mode network quiets down. And having the default mode network quiet down is a major, major way to activate the, the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest relaxation nervous system, which is where healing lives. So anything that we can do to turn down that default mode network, the voice in our head, the sense of self, the sense of us against the world, and I don't mean to be going all airy-fairy on you guys here, but this is just part of physical health. Anything you could do to access or to quiet this default mode network is going to turn on the healing system, the, the parasympathetic nervous system, and that's true about any health challenge. You will, uh, you will uh, improve any health challenge, even something like chronic pain. 
and this has actually shown, been shown, or was shown, at the Wake Forest School of Medicine in North Carolina, a, a study that compared mindfulness meditation to placebo and analgesia, analgesia, which is pain relief, and they found that a person's natural level of mindfulness was associated with lower pain sensitivity. All right. 844-236-6010. Time to hit the phones. Good morning. Paula in Texas. Good morning. How you doing, Paula? Paula, Paula? Oh, no. I don't see Paula. I don't hear Paula. Are you there? Poor Paula's been holding on the whole show. Paula? Can, can you hear me now? Oh, there you are. Paula, what's going on? Okay. Thanks for well, holding this whole time. To... Oh, sure, sure. We get to listen to your show while we hold, so it's great. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, Tony had... Um... A question on Tuesday, and he had mentioned to you that he has a sudden onset of gas despite um, the digestive strategies that he uses of yours. Okay. And I just wanted to make the comment that that's exactly what happened to me when I discovered I had the parasites. So anything I ate had tremendous gas despite mm. all the other things. So he may want to look into that. Okay. And then um, I also started using um, black walnut liquid instead of taking yeah. the drug they wanted me to take. That's a good so, one. That's that's pretty. That's a bitter. That's another bitter too. That'll that's good for the digestive it? system. Oh, okay. it's way better. You can use. You can make your own black walnut paste and put it on warts to kill warts. Black oh. walnut has really powerful antiviral properties, and even cancers, skin cancers. There's some literature that talks about black walnut and skin cancer. Okay, um, and I did have one question. I did find HCL drops online, um, drclarkstore.com, but it was 5%. Is that Yeah. Um, uh, the good stuff you got to have a pharmacist make, but that might help you. You okay. should try it. Okay. And then d it doesn't affect, I mean, it's not hard on your esophagus? No. Uh, you put in water. HCL? Put in, no, no. Put in okay. water. Just like you do with it. apple cider vinegar. Okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, apple cider vinegar is not quite as intense, so you can do it straight. But yeah, if you, dial, you put a few drops of HCL, a few HCL drops in water and then drink it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Well, Good thank deal. you. Thank you, Paula. Have a great Bye. day. Thanks for uh -huh. calling. All right, let's see. Uh, let's go to Grace in Florida real quick. Might have to put you on hold, Grace. What's going on? How you doing, Grace? I'm Grace? fine. How are you? What's up? How, how are you today? How can we help you? Okay. No, no, no. I wanted to make uh, two comments. One on the uh, the CBD oil. Yeah. It's um, for people to notice that it is also very good for their pet. For the what? It, it, you, uh, it's good for their pets. I can't really understand. For the that. Pets? Oh, pets. Yes, for the yes, pets. yes, for pets. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Grace, yes. I'm sorry. Can you hold? We yes. got to take a commercial break. Sure. Sure. Okay, good. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Got a couple lines open. 844 236 6010. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. on the bright side. I'm pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Tomorrow we'll be talking to Dr. Jamie Kaufman about her book, Acid Reflux in Children. We were going to have Sanjeev Javi on today. If you're listening for uh, the CBD talk, uh, the CBD uh, interview, Sanjeev formulated three CBD products for longevity, um, Hemp FX Uplift, which is a mood enhancer, Hemp FX Cream, which is a uh, soothing muscle cream, and Hemp FX Relax, which is a sleep tincture. Tincture. CBD is good for all of these things, mood enhancement, sleep, as well as soothing and uh, pain relieving benefits. We'll talk to Sanjeev next week. I'm not sure if the Hemp FX products are out yet, but we will talk to uh, Sanjeev about CBD tomorrow and, or next week. And speaking of CBD, we're talking to Grace in Florida, who has something to say here about CBD. Hey, Grace. Um, Grace? I, I, I use it on, I have two pets one passed away from cancer recently but okay. um it helped her all the way through um she continued that's great. to eat so oh, she never had that issue yes and my other pet um he has a uh he has a he coughs and that helps him keep him calm and stuff and he oh, that's uses great. it and um he had a, like a little prostate um issue like they thought it was growing and yeah. he, after using the the um cbd oil it's yeah. not growing it's gotten smaller again so oh, that's amazing. That, 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 that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, it, yeah you know, the CBD can't lie to you. <laughs> that's right. CBD really got going as a uh, medicinal 
uh, just probably about four or five years ago because people started giving it to their pets. First it became legal for pets before it was legal for people. So pets started, uh, people started giving it to their pets and they got amazing results. So I'm not surprised to hear your story because I've been hearing them for years uh, for pet cancer, for pet pain. It, pets, uh, animals make CBD, humans make CBD. And the really amazing thing is, is that the same stuff you can get in plants is the exact same molecule that's in your body that has the role of, uh, of pain relief and anxiety relief and calming things down. And you can eat the plant or use the plant in a tincture or in some kind of form, and you can get all the benefits. It's just amazing stuff. Is that what you want to say, yes. Grace, or anything else? Well, uh, another thing, um, I was, I was uh, speaking to a person that their daughter at 19 was having heavy periods, and she, had, um, she was getting radiation already. Um, and they were thinking of giving her a hysterectomy. And I told them about how you how you speak about the essential fatty acids, et cetera, yeah. changing her diet, et cetera. About yeah. two, three months later, they told me, stopped, so she didn't have to continue with wait, the wait, radiation. Wait. Would you, would, yeah. wait, 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 wait. Say that, so let, me, let me digest that, Grace. That's huge. Say that again now. Okay, so she started to take the... Um, 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 the uh, essential fatty acids. I told her to, you know, get some essential had, fatty acids. Did you say she had? What did she have? A tumor? A precancer? No, she was heavy, heavy periods. Heavy, heavy periods. periods. Endometriosis. Did they call it endometriosis? Yeah, that, no, they didn't call it that. They just okay. they said they didn't know what it was. Which is, okay, they just heavy worse. periods, and they were going to have heavy surgery. Periods. Take. They were going to give her hysterectomy. Yeah. Oh my god. Yes, because um, um, they started on with radiation. So they oh my started God. to radiate her, and oh then she so started to lose her hair. And when she told oh me this, I said, no, no, no. Before you continue, give this a chance for two to three months. Yeah. Try this and see if it if it helps. And she told me, oh, yeah, totally. Three months Praise later. Praise God. Her, That's her amazing. Got so much better. Yes, exactly. So I want people to hear that because it really I love is true. It. it helped me, so I share it with others. Thank you, and Grace. it really works. So I want people to pay attention and really try it. Just give thank it two you. or three months, and you will see a big difference. That's so thank huge. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank pay, you. pay it because forward. You do so much good work. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. I do, thank you. I really well, thank God you. Bless you were the only one that told me about it. So thank you. Well, I, I appreciate you that. So, so pay it forward. Have a beautiful day. Thanks for sharing that. You that's too. a great thank story. You. Bye-bye. Okay, bye, Grace. Love it. Love that story. You guys, you know how many times I've been hearing things like this? That's why I do the program. That's why I do my presentations. I'm not going to stop till the day I die. People have to know that we have so many options available to us, non-toxic, non-medical options. Essential fatty acids, beyond tangy tangerine, gentian, aloe, stomach bitters, so many things, probiotics, deep breathing, mindfulness. These are so many things that we can do for our health challenges without having to interact with the medical model. You're not going to hear from the medical model which, by the way, is embedded with the political model and the legal model and all these other institutions that are here to disempower individuals. You're not going to hear it from them. You've got to, if you're sick, you're not going to get better if you're chronically ill. If you have a chronic long-term health challenge, you are not going to get better by using the medical model, period. But it doesn't matter because you have all these other options available to you. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. Bob in Minnesota. Good morning. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Hey, um, I was calling to get greater, uh, greater clarification on cannabinoids and yes. stomach acid. Okay. Uh, with regard to cannabinoid, yeah. Um, yesterday, now I believe um, I understood you to say that uh, cannabinoids can aid with Alzheimer's, and it's based on an article you're reading where the article stated that the cannabinoids remove the plaques off yeah. the brain. Right. Now, with that being said. Uh, there's pharmaceutical drugs that make the same claim, and I mm. thought that just w- would leave a void and yeah. not really aid in Alzheimer's. So, yeah. is there a you difference don't wanna, there? It, well, yeah, that's a great point. You're not going to, if your body is, Alzheimer's, as you've heard, it sounds like you've been listening to this program, so you know, Alzheimer's is just basically a, a rotting brain. Excuse me for being disgusting and gross, but I'm just trying to get you, so we understand what we're talking about here. Deterioration of the brain, okay? Okay. So, if, when the body deteriorates, when parts of the body deteriorate, the body will fill things in. And the plaques represent a patch, a filling in. It's kind of like cholesterol plaques in the, in the arteries when the arteries start to deteriorate. So getting rid of the plaques is not a great strategy. But if you're, I mean, you want to repair the brain. But the interesting thing about chronic plaque formation is that itself can be a problem. Do you follow me? So, yeah, right, the body's right. attempting to create a patch, but the, the Band-Aid itself can interfere with chemistry. 
And it's the Band-Aid itself that can be a problem as much as the brain deterioration. So two things are going on here. Are you going to cure your Alzheimer's disease by getting rid of the plaques? No. However, you may reduce your symptoms and, and improve your improved cognition. Do you follow me by, with yeah, the strategy? Without a toxic drug. Without a toxic drug, exactly. With something that's already in your body. And so okay. when cannabinoids treat depression, they have a couple of, me or no, I'm sorry, dementia, they have a couple of mechanisms. Number one, they're going to help with the plaques. But number two, by activating the rest and digest and relaxation nervous system, they're going to support healing of the brain. They're going to calm things down. Cannabinoids have a calming effect. They're used for agitation, uh, dementia with agitation. At least they've been studied for agitation. They're used for um, att uh, attention deficit disorder, uh, adult attention deficit disorder. They've been studied for that, and their claim to fame in the brain is for seizure disorders. So they have a calming effect on the brain, and that can help with some dementia patients, and that can also help, access, help the patient access the uh, parasympathetic healing nervous system. The plaque, getting rid of the plaques might, might help symptomatically, but it's not going to take care of the problem fundamentally. Did that okay, help you? Okay. Does that yep, make sense? Yep, okay. that helps. Okay, good. Um, and, and then the other thing uh, with regard to uh, stomach acid, yeah. um, it, it seems counterintuitive, but uh, if you have stomach ulcers, uh, increasing your stomach acid would uh, help. That? Now, tell me what you think about that. It sounds like you're a layperson, a smart layperson. So tell me that's true. Why do you think that would be? Um, as far as increasing the acid? Why would increasing acid improve ulcers and, in fact, uh, actually have a positive effect on ulcers? Well, because, uh, well it's, it's tricky. I don't know. It's, I, I'm just tricky. thinking that it, it helps to, uh, I mean, it just helps to break down the food to a, a much more It'll do that. level, It'll, so it doesn't, so it doesn't, um, actually. It'll do that. It'll do that, but it also kills a bacteria called H. pylori. Okay. And that bacteria is now known to be the cause of many stomach ulcers, gastritis, et cetera. So killing oh. the bacteria is one of the jobs of the acid. H. pylori suppresses acid production, and H. pylori can also live in a certain amount of acid. But by uh, st stimulating acid secretion, you reduce the likelihood of H. pylori infection. Now, if you already have an ulcer, acid can be obviously, you know, it can burn. So you got to be a little bit careful that way. But to prevent an ulcer, absolutely acidification of the stomach contents is very, very, or the stomach when you eat is very important, supporting acidification because it can help reduce the likelihood of this uh, H. pylori infection. H. pylori okay, is actually, so they give you antibiotics now for ulcers to kill the H. pylori. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay. Well, I was just going to say, so then you could actually um, just kind of tough through it and use, uh, increase your stomach acid, even though yeah. it kind of burns a little bit, but over time, it's going to actually get better. Over time, you'll have you'll have a healing benefit, but but your point, you know, you it can burn. So you want to be a little bit respectful of that. Maybe dilute HCL drops. You don't want to create. You don't want to irritate the an ulcer. If you already have an ulcer, you don't want to irritate it, and it can be painful. Okay. The trick is to prevent the ulcers. That's always going to be the best your best strategy. Bob, I'm out of time, but thanks for your good okay. questions. Appreciate it, and thanks for listening yep. to the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for all the longevity products and truthtreatments.com for our true skin health products. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.